Hi. How many of you have felt your phone buzz, but when you look, there wasn't a notification? A show of hands, please. Quite a few. Or perhaps hearing your name being called, but when you look, no one's there. How about that one? Hmm, interesting. What do you think, Mohan? You think they're crazy? Well, for those of you that put up your hands, we've got some bad news. Unfortunately, you're actually fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> Illusions like these are a part of our daily lives. We've encountered them plenty of times too. But the real question is, when could these experiences indicate something unusual? When could they make you appear crazy? Hi, I'm Rohan. And I'm saying, we're medical students from the Midlands, and today we are going on a journey. A journey where we tear down the stigma surrounding psychosis. What do you imagine when you think of someone crazy? Perhaps you imagine someone mad, someone wild, someone foolish. Just a couple of synonyms taken from the Oxford English Dictionary. But do you know what is crazy about the word crazy? Just how subjective it is. We often use the word crazy to label individuals who think or behave differently to what we consider is normal. A set of arbitrary rules, a set of arbitrary rules, so to say, based on what our minds think is right. I mean, for all I know, this guy could be crazy. Cheers for that insightful piece, Syed. Um, moving on though, we would like for you all to meet B, our lovely patient who has recently emigrated from South Asia. Like many of you who put your hands up today, B also heard voices. But in her case, they're strange. They're unusual. They keep commenting on her activities and it doesn't seem to stop. As if that wasn't distressing enough though, B received an unknown phone call and is now convinced that the Secret Service is following her. Now, I don't know about all of you, but doesn't this seem a bit strange? It could very well be possible that B has a psychiatric issue. We've all heard of depression. We've all heard of anxiety. But what about psychosis? Before coming into medicine, we certainly hadn't heard of psychosis, and that may be the case for a lot of you here today. Honestly, all we knew was what the media told us. Sensationalistic journalism pointing the finger and calling patients with psychosis killers. With cultural stigma and a lack of awareness, it is easy to believe that those suffering with psychosis are crazy or perhaps even inherently violent. Contrary to the media's perception though, those suffering with psychosis have a higher mortality rate. They are up to three times more likely to die. But what actually is psychosis? Well, psychosis, it's a long-term debilitating condition in which individuals experience a reality that's different to everyone else's. We most commonly see this in paranoid schizophrenia, a term you may have heard, and patients present with a host of symptoms. They may have hallucinations where they see, feel or hear things that are not there. They may have delusions where they hold fixed, abnormal beliefs that don't fit with their background. Now B, our lovely patient, had aspects of both hallucinations and delusions, but her family didn't know what to do with them. Over the last two months, she's been getting slowly and progressively worse. She doesn't eat, she doesn't sleep. She gets paranoid, she gets worked up. It's gotten so bad at times that her own family her own flesh and blood, have lashed out at her in anger. To top it all off, her local community, the community that she calls home now, they have started shunning her. They see her as strange. They see her as weird. They even sometimes call her crazy as she walks by. Bee's family, they've tried everything, bless them. From herbal remedies to prayers, nothing has worked. Reluctantly, they take B to see their GP, their family practitioner. When asked about mental health, they reveal that they are terrified, they are petrified at the thought of being given a psychiatric label. In their eyes, once a mental health label is given, it could never, ever be removed. 
They were mortified at the thought of being made permanent outcasts by their community. What would people think if their family was the one to have a crazy relative? The concerns of Bee's family, as Rohan highlighted, are very common in the black, Asian and minority ethnic community. They stem from two fundamental factors. Firstly, a lack of awareness. Many BAME individuals have a lot of uncertainty surrounding mental health and its impact. And secondly, cultural beliefs that skew the perception of mental health. Many wrongly assume that those suffering with mental health issues are weak, are crazy. The attitude towards psychosis within the BAME community renders it near impossible to talk about. This lack of dialogue, it creates a taboo, isolating those affected and fostering stigma. As members of the South Asian community ourselves, we have seen the stigma firsthand. It destroys lives. It destroys families. This must stop. There are various social factors that negatively influence the outcomes of BAME patients, including the need to fit into a new culture and also being wary of mental health services. All these elements come together to form a complex case that is often worsened by the fact that BAME patients tend to present at a time of crisis. This typically leads to poorer outcomes and is exactly why we need to recognize the features of psychosis early on. Early recognition could be the difference between being treated at home or being sectioned at the hospital. So looking back, looking back on B's journey, what could have been done differently? How could she have felt better? Her local community often use the term bagel, their term for crazy. But with so many people saying this, B often wondered, am I crazy? Whilst no one else could appreciate her symptoms, for them, they can't truly understand it. These hallucinations were real to be. They happened. Why was she being called crazy for something that she wasn't making up? Hallucinations are just as real to the individual with psychosis as anything else that happens in our perceived world. In fact, you all listening to this speech today, it's just as real to you as a hallucinatory voice is to a patient with psychosis. So when we label these events as being crazy, or perhaps a person experiencing these events as being crazy, that terminology, it's unjust, it's oppressive, it's outdated. These are inherent biases that we all have, but we don't consider often. Tackling them can truly make the difference. And we can move, all move forward together in that vein. If we all work together, we can start to eliminate some of these small stigmas that are within our subculture. B's story is inspired by the experiences of many BAME patients suffering with psychosis. We have identified a clear problem, but what can we do differently? It may be cliche to say, but education is super important. Knowledge is empowering. Discussions must be had and should involve everyone, from the year eight kid to the office manager working eight hour days. Every community, BAME or not, should get stuck in. Family, friends, neighbors, every single one of you in this room has a vital role to play in tackling today's mental health crisis. Though psychosis may be hard for us to comprehend, open dialogue and safe spaces can go a long way. Just a simple smile and reassuring conversation can work wonders. So today, let's all take our first step together. Instead of asking, are you crazy? Let's ask, are you okay? You, our audience, are today's advocates for mental health. We hope we've inspired each and every one of you to think about psychosis and how we all together can make a change. Tomorrow's destination, a world much more supportive of mental health, it's far closer than we think. Thank you.